connected to you. So I want to start tonight by sharing with you something that the Lord surprised me with uh, a couple of months ago. I'm sitting having coffee with Jesus because that's where the anointing flows. Amen. And, uh, <laughs> and I said to the Lord, as I always do every day, God, what's on your heart today? And what are you dreaming about? And he said to me, I have a gift for you, Lana. I said, hallelujah. My first thought was it's going to be something like breakthrough, increase, favor, abundance. In my mind, I'm going through all of these things. What I'm about to tell you that the Lord told me was my gift was completely not what I expected. The Lord said to me, Lana, I am giving you in this new era the gift of endurance. <laughs> that wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> I know about endurance. <laughs> And the Lord said to me, you need, and the body of Christ needs endurance in this new era. And I thought, oh my gosh, Lord, I feel like I've been enduring for a long time, yeah. right? I feel like I've been in that place of endurance. And the Lord said to me, yes, but I'm bringing you and my people to a place of victorious endurance, and so began this journey with Jesus on endurance. So as I do, I'm a bit of a word nerd and I've had seriously awesome encounters with Jesus over Wikipedia. I, I tell no lies, right? I read definitions of words and the Holy Spirit ministers to me, right? So I looked up the word endurance and uh, this one's from Google, and it said this, it is the ability to endure an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. I'm like, okay, that's pretty much what I, I knew endurance to mean. Then it had a second definition underneath. It said this, endurance is the capacity of something to last or withstand, but then the last couple of words got me, without wear and tear. Isn't that a good word? The capacity of something to last or withstand without wear and tear. So now let's go to the synonyms. <laughs> All right. It means continuance, continuity, lasting power, durability, permanence, longevity, constancy, stability, changelessness, lastingness, everlastingness, bearing, tolerance, fortitude, forbearance, patience, acceptance, resolution, and determination. As I read those words, the Lord speaks to me and he says to me, Lana, I am raising up a church that is victorious and running with enduring faith in this new era that will withstand all of, the, um, all of the, the difficulties that may come, but will do it with victory and without coming to a place where you get knocked back and forward and then you look like you've just been through the ringer, right? That I am bringing my people to a place where I'm calling you higher to live above your circumstances and rather than live on the defense all the time, to start living on the offense. Amen? I believe that God is raising up a victorious bride that isn't looking necessarily for, you know, the things that are coming at her and going, whoa, okay, whoa, there's another one, whoa, and constantly like this, but is an army that is taking ground and anything that gets in the way just gets trodden on by the victory of those who are walking in Christ. Amen? So I am in this encounter with the Lord over months. And the next day, I remember, it was a couple of months, the next morning I woke up and I said to the Lord, okay, God, what's on your heart today and what are you dreaming about? And the Lord says to me, Lana, I want you to start exercising. I thought I rebuked that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> no, I didn't. My, my thought was actually, is that you, Lord? But I do, I love to walk. So I already exercise. So I'm like, God, I don't understand. He says to me, no, 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 I have a particular type of exercise for you that I want you to start doing. 
He said, and it will be a prophetic act. And as you step into this new area of exercise, you will encounter me and I'll teach you something. I said, okay, so I'm thinking swimming, tennis. I'd even like to try surfing sometime. The Lord says to me, I want you to start boxing. Yeah. Sorry, what? <laughs> he said, if you go and obey me and you start taking boxing classes, you will encounter me and I'll give you a message for this season. I thought, okay, <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work, but I know it's God. So I say to Kevin, all of a sudden, I have this incredible excitement about starting to box. I don't, think, I don't know if I know if I can box, even if I'm any good at it, but God told me I need to start boxing. He said, well, go and sign up. So I go and I, I find a, a local gym and I sign up and I go for my first class. Now, in the moment of boxing, I think I'm dying, right? My, I found muscles in my shoulders and my arms that I never knew that I had before, right? But in this moment that I'm boxing, a 30-minute session, the first time, as I'm boxing, the Lord is speaking to me and he says to me, Lana, in this era right now, he said, I am building the faith muscles in the church and the way that it's coming is through what I'm calling resistance training. I said, did I have to come boxing for you to tell me that? My, like I couldn't lift my son for 24 hours. My arms are like dead weights. But the Lord says to me, there have been so many things that are coming against my people and there are two choices that you can make. You can either run in the opposite direction and go, whoa, this is too hard or you can stand your ground. He said, and many of my people have been standing their ground, but a discouragement and a weariness and a hopelessness has taken over. He said, what I want to encourage my people is that I'm actually training my people what it means to live by faith and not by sight. And that in the process of the resistance training, that you will find a strength and muscles that you never knew that you had. And I have been boxing for, what, nearly six months or so now, and I love it. I love it. I'm like, oh, I feel like Wonder Woman. Like... <laughs> But God has taught me so much about faith through simply going and learning how to box. He's taught me a lot about victory and he's taught me a lot about what it means to stand in who I am in him and what it means to strengthen myself in order to carry what he's going to release. Now, the reason I believe that the Lord is highlighting endurance is because right now what he's releasing and what he's going to release in this new era, he's not looking at you today and saying, hey, guess what, for the next two years, this is what it's going to look like. He's looking at you and saying, I want to build your faith and I want to strengthen you and I want to rewire things because what I'm looking at is longevity. Right? There is a longevity that God is wanting to build and teach us as his people to prepare us for the long haul. And part of the endurance training is a maturity. It's a maturing of the faith that God is bringing within the church that is branding God's people as unstoppable. I am not defined by my circumstances. I'm not defined by what the world says. I'm not going to shy back because of uh, fear. I'm not going to conform to the ways of the world or the expectations of the world or even the intimidation of the world. I am going to stand in who I am in Christ because I know who he is and I know who I am and I'm actually living in a reality that's not the natural realm. Amen. I actually live from my seat and not from earth. I believe that in this new era, we're being invited into the place of governing with God in a way that we never have before. What does it mean, Lord, for me to live in my seat in Ephesians 2 and to govern with you? What does that look like? What does it look like for me to walk in my authority and then see my, my city and my nation and my family and my marriage impacted? So I've, I want to read to you from Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to read to you from two different translations because I think they're both incredible. The first one is from uh, the ESV. And it says this, And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. 
so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience and joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share the inheritance of the saints in light. Then you have the Passion Translation. I love this. It says, My fellow brothers... When it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. And then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. Isn't that powerful? Let endurance have its work within you, within me, so that we lack nothing right? Let it have its work so that we are walking in the fullness. It's an incredible thing. At the start, when, when I told you God said endurance, I was like, that's not a gift. Actually, it is. That is one of the greatest gifts that God has given to me in this season of, of taking me on a journey of what it looks like to walk in enduring faith. When I wrote my book, you may have heard me share this, The Prophetic Voice of God, the Lord gave me a heads up three weeks before it happened. He said this to me, Lana, you are about to enter the dark night of the soul, but don't worry, I'll be with you. I said, wow, that's not a word I really want to hear. But a loving father was giving me a heads up of what was coming. So when it came, I wasn't blindsided and I knew that he'd be with me. So three weeks to the day, the day the contract lands in my hand for this book, the enemy comes at me with a lie and finds a landing place in my heart and torments me day and night for the next six months. Day and night torment of the enemy trying to kill me, witches, all this horrible stuff. But what did God teach me in that time? I didn't have anything else to hold on to but the Word of God. Every moment I didn't live by anything else but, but by, God, what are you saying in this moment? And I would literally go for one minute and he would say to me, you are going to make it. You are going to come out of this stronger than when you went in. And suddenly I'd be able to breathe for five minutes. Then the torment would come back again, the fear, the oppression, the, unlike anything I'd experienced. Oh my God, I can hardly breathe. Okay, Lana, come back. What am I saying? All right, Lord, your word says that I live by every word that comes out of your mouth. So right now, God, what are you saying? And he'd repeat again the same thing, or he might say something different. And suddenly I can breathe a little bit more. And after a couple of weeks and a couple of months, the torment would come again and I'd feel myself getting a little bit stronger. Hang on a sec. No, 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 no. My God said that I'm going to come through this. My God said that what the enemy meant for my harm, that he, that he is going to turn for my good. And it began to build in me an enduring faith and a resolve that I'd never had before. Now I've come out of that dark night of the soul and God has given me in what the enemy tried to use to kill me, a gift that can never be taken from me right? There is something deposited within me regarding my faith in what God says that no man can steal from me. And it came in a place where I thought I'm going to die. And it wasn't that I could sit at home and hide in my bedroom. I had to get up and I was traveling and I was releasing words and meetings and I'd be dying on the inside, or at least I felt like it. But God would say to me, you sow into somebody else's breakthrough tonight and trust me for your own. And in that place, he built in me a fortification and an enduring faith that is unlike anything I've experienced before. And so I say that to encourage any of you tonight that if you're in a place where the battle's raging and it's really dark and it's really hard, like anchor yourself in what he says. Anchor yourself in that place of what is he speaking into your situation right now. Lift your eyes above what's going on in the natural and lift your eyes to the one who is your helper, the maker of heaven and earth. And in that place, he, will, he is building within you a strength and a trust and a resilience 
that will not be stolen from you. So when the enemy comes at you again, you say, what, you again? I know your tricks. And as far as I know from what the Word of God says, you don't belong in my face. You actually belong down here under my foot. Amen? You belong under my feet. See, the enemy, he, he's so good at his intimidation. His bark is so loud, right? But he has what? No authority. He has no authority. The only authority he has is the authority that we give him through our faith, where we put our belief, where we sow our agreement. It's so important that when he comes, even when our emotions are going, Rah! that we live not by what we feel, but we live by what he says. Amen? I, I mean, I look at the, the, uh, the world, right? Look right now what's going on, right? Look at China and the virus and all of this, you know, instability that's happening in the earth. My goodness, if we are people that live by what happens in the natural, we're going to live like this constantly shaken and in fear but if we live in the reality that he is my protector we live in the reality of psalm 91 i live in the reality of who he says i am in that place then whatever goes on in the around me in the natural doesn't matter in the sense not the sense i don't care but it doesn't shake me because my roots aren't in my circumstances amen my roots are deep down in who he says i am and what his word is he doesn't lie. The word of God, he, he's not a liar. There is no darkness within him. So if he says to me, I am your healer, end of story. If he says, I'm your protector, end of story. My faith is here, right in the word of God. And I believe that part of what God has been doing in so many of the battles that so many of us, of us have faced is that he has been building that strength, even if you don't see it yet. There's a fortification within you and I prophesy over you tonight that there is a fire coming upon you in this new era that will rise up within you and a roar will come out of you that will say, not on my watch. I've had enough with the enemy coming and trying to steal, kill and destroy in my life, in my marriage, in my kids, in my family, in my nation, in the nations. I've had enough. I'm not accepting this anymore because this is not part of my inheritance. And if I'm here and this is part of my jurisdiction, then I'm going to use my authority and I'm going to take down what the enemy's trying to do. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So about six months ago, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Lana, I'm raising up my people to a new level of normal. And this word really impacted me so deeply because the Lord challenged me on the smallest things that I thought, like I didn't even think about. So let me give you an example. One of my children were sick six months ago and I texted a friend of mine and I said, well, it might have been longer than six months, but anyway, I, I text a friend and I said, hey, can you pray for my son because he's really not well and, you know, you know what, if you're a parent, it's terrible when your kids are sick, right? You hate seeing them sick. I'm like, so can you please pray that the Lord heals him? And she wrote back and she said, yeah, of course I'll pray, but Lana, can I just say this? Um, don't be too stressed because that's just what happens. Kids get sick. Now, look, Yes, you send your kid to daycare and, well, you know, they come back with the sniffles. But there was something that happened inside of me in that moment where the Holy Spirit whispered to me and he said to me, is that going to be your normal? And he challenged me. He said, is that where you are going to put your faith in the sense that, well, kids get sick, so that's it. Like, I'll just have to accept it. Well, no. No. I am not going to accept that. I am going to live my life in a way that decrees over my children that you will live in divine health in the name of Jesus. I will not accept a belief system or a this is just what happens in the world sticker over my children because that's just what we experience. No, no, no. If I live in heavenly places, if I'm seated with Christ and the word of God says something different, then I'm not going to lower my faith and my, my level of... Um, uh, 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 my belief system to meet my circumstances. Yeah. I love that Bill Johnson, he always says this, you know what? Don't lower your faith and your theology. Don't change your theology to meet your circumstances. 
you live in a place where you live in the word of God and you may see circumstances not aligning yet with what God is saying, but that is not a place to then go, okay, well then the word of God mustn't be working very well, yeah. right? I'm going to stand on the word of God and I'm going to believe Isaiah 55 that every word that he speaks does not return void. I'm going to take the Lord at his word. And you know what? If it turns out differently to what I expect or it happens in a different way to what I thought or a different time, I am not changing the subject. He is always good. He's always kind. His word is true and nothing changes who he is. Amen. 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 Nothing changes who he is. So I want to prophesy over you that in this new era, that there is a new level of normal that God is inviting you into, that in, there may be moments in this new era where the Holy Spirit, like he did with me, will kind of give you a bit of a conviction. Hey, you know what? Don't settle for that. Don't settle for that. I have something better for you. Come up higher. What do I say about that? And ask him, what are you saying, Lord? Get into the word. No, you said, Lord, that, so I'm taking that and I'm going to run with it. Dutch Sheets, oh, this is one of my favorite quotes. So Dutch Sheets says this, our authority level in Christ is connected to our level of faith. To the degree we believe God's word, we will obey and act upon it with authority. Grow in your faith and thereby grow in your authority in Christ. I thought that was a really good word. Our authority level in Christ is connected to our level of faith. And that challenged me at first because I thought, well, we've been given all authority in Christ. But then the Lord said to me, yes, but do you walk in that authority? As you, act, as you exercise your faith, you're then walking in the authority that's already yours. And I believe that there's an awakening taking place in the body of Christ right now to our authority in Christ. There are situations in the earth, like I've, I've mentioned, but, and there will be more where we are, as the church, being brought to a place of divine decision. We can't sit on the fence anymore and go, oh, well, let's just see what happens. There is a, a time that we are in right now where we are being called to make a decision and to decide, am I going to sit back and just let this all happen or am I going to take this, this situation in the earth, in my family, my, my circumstances and am I going to grab the word of God and, and see heaven invade earth? Am I going to see the reality of what God speaks manifest on the earth? The prophetic is an invitation to engage with God in what he's saying. It's an invitation to partnership. So much of my, my younger years, when I was first starting out in the prophetic, I heard so many teachings that went like this. If you get a prophetic word or God speaks something, write it down and put it on the shelf and then if it happens, it's God. And so for many years, I had journals full of prophetic words and a lot of them, I was like, why didn't they happen? They mustn't have been God. And the Lord challenged me. He said to me, Lana, there's a lot in the realm of the prophetic. He said, there's timing. There's a whole different, uh, there's a whole lot of different reasons why a prophetic word may not come to pass. It can be opposition. It can be timing. It can be a lack of obedience. It can be a whole heap of things. But he said to me, when I speak, it is not a place to sit back and disengage. It's an invitation to engage your faith with what I'm speaking. So right now, I believe that there is that moment of decision upon us as we face things that we see going on in the world and we have a decision to make. God, where am I going to put my faith right now? Am I going to put my faith in what I'm seeing going on in the world, in the news and all of the stuff or am I going to put my faith in what you're saying and partner with you in my prayer, intercession and decree to see these things come down in the name of Jesus? 
It's time to be established and to occupy. The word occupy has been resounding in my spirit lately. For a lot of people in the body of Christ, they felt like they've been in a place of pushing and pushback, pushing and pushback. And you kind of feel like you're a mouse on a wheel and you're not actually taking ground. But that's changed because the era has changed. And I believe that the Lord is speaking that there is now an occupying that is going to take place in this new era. That not only will you occupy that which God has spoken to you and what he has promised you, but there is an establishing that is taking place in the body of Christ that you will not be uprooted again. I believe that there have been many in the body of Christ that have received that, the word of God and it's looked like their breakthrough is about to begin and it's kind of started and suddenly they get pulled back again. And then it starts again and oh, it's pulled back again and then it's harder than it was before. But I believe that the Lord is saying that there is an establishing and an occupying that is going to take place. In Amos 9, it says that the Lord says, you know, I'll plant them and they shall never again be uprooted. Like I just, I really believe that there's a deep rooting that is going to take place where the Lord is going to make an establishing in the land of your promise. Where there is a fortification that has taken place within you, where now you will begin to learn to navigate the realm of fullness rather than the place of contending and lack. The stewardship, I believe, in this new era has shifted in a sense of its focus. And I want to explain this a little bit. I'm not saying there will never be a place of contending. There will always be a place where we have to contend for the promises of God and for the, the prophetic words, wage war with your prophetic words. But I believe that for many in the body of Christ, it has been a, um, how can I explain this to you, what I'm seeing? Uh, it's like, it hasn't been just one thing. It's been like so many things. Like there's been an area where there's been so much uh, work, if I can use those words, contending for very little fruit. But I believe that in this new era now that we are going to see a, such a fruitfulness and such an abundance and such a thriving in the acceleration and the breakthrough and the increase and the move of God that is going to take place, that God is going to begin to teach us what it looks like to steward uh, the more, to steward it with abundance rather than steward with, with the little and, and feeling like, God, I'm, I'm you know, pushing so hard and it's really difficult and there's this much fruit. Well, I want to prophesy in this new era that you will put your hand to something and you will see 10 times the amount of fruit that you've ever seen before. Amen? That there will be a greater manifestation of fruitfulness. And God is going to teach us in this new era what it looks like to steward rapid increase. Because we have learnt in the past seasons and the past era how to steward the place of contending. Now we're moving into a place of learning how to steward the increase. Hallelujah. So as I'm again having a coffee with Jesus at the end of last year, I said to the Lord, God, what, is there anything you want to say about 2020? And he said, yes, Lana. He said, 2020 will be a year of bold faith. And that was a very multi-leveled word. A lot of it was what I spoke this morning about obedience and moving out on the word of the Lord, bold faith in that regard. He spoke to me about uh, walking by faith and not by sight. That bold faith, walking in bold faith means living from our seat, uh, living in the place where we are governing from the heavenly realms and what God is saying rather than living on earth. But then the Lord said this to me, Lana, 2020 will be a year of the power of the mustard seed faith. And so obviously I went to Matthew 17, 20. I want to read it to you. But it says this, For truly I say to you, if you have faith, the grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Then in the Passion, it says this, I promise you, 
If you have faith inside of you, no bigger than the size of a small mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move away from here and go over there and you will see it move. There is nothing that you couldn't do. I believe that part of this fortification of faith, this endurance God is building, this strengthening in bold faith, that God wants to demonstrate to us and through us that nothing is impossible. Does the word of God say that all things are possible with him? Does the word of God say that can a nation be born in a day? I believe that God is going to invite us higher into a place in this new era where we take scriptures like that and not only do we believe them, but we begin to see them manifesting. This is an era where God is going to demonstrate his power in greater ways through what we decree and what we speak. There is coming a time where we are going to decree a thing and suddenly it will be established. There will be a time in not too far off where the power of God will manifest so powerfully through the mouths of God's people to to usher in unusual, amazing signs, wonders and miracles that I believe right now that God is training us in faith in greater ways and in our decree so that we can carry what he's going to release. Because when we speak, our words create. We may not see it, but in the spirit, our words create. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Okay. So the Lord says this to me, Lana, I'm going to reintroduce the church to the power of my word. Now we know Hebrews 4.12. It says, for the word of God is living and active. It doesn't say dead, right? It says living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and the discerning of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That's the ESV. Then the Passion Translation says it this way. For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, and it pierces more sharply than a two-edged sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of the heart. When I was pondering this word, this, uh, sorry, this scripture, Over the last couple of months, the Lord whispered to me. And when he whispered what I'm about to tell you, it brought a conviction on me. If there's any way that I do this, God, please correct me because I don't want to live like this. The Lord said to me, Lana, too many of my people are being led by their soul and not by their spirit. Now, that wasn't a word from God where he's going, That was a word from God saying, hey, I have something greater for you and you're living below what I purchased for you. That's not the voice of condemnation. That's the voice of a loving father who is calling his people into the place that he gave all for. And so that challenged me. I began to ask the Lord, God, is there any ways in my life? Show me where I'm being led by my soul and not by my spirit by your spirit. Show me ways. And the Lord began to train me in greater ways in moments that I thought were just nothing, where I would be in a circumstance and I would react out of my emotions and then I'd kind of start this spiral and the Lord would whisper and go, "Uh, uh, uh, stop. What have I said? And I go, oh my gosh, hang on. Yeah, whoa, Lord, what have you said? And in that moment of recognition and remembering what God had said and intentionally engaging, my, my, um, I went from living here to living aligned. I went from living in my emotions and crazy, whoa, and living by all of that stuff. And living by your soul doesn't just mean your emotions. It can mean a whole heap of other stuff. But it brought me back into alignment. And so now every time I feel like hang on, I'm being led by anything else that's apart from what God is speaking. I'll stop and go, no, Lord, what are you saying right now? 
I believe that even by living led by the Spirit is by living in a place where we're hearing what he's saying and what the Word of God says. So he then says to me, Lana, it is time for the ferocious focus of faith. And I thought that has to be the Lord because I wouldn't use the word ferocious. So I get back on Google. And what does ferocious mean? To savage, sorry, it means savagely fierce or violent. Or as the synonyms are intense, strong, powerful and extreme. And the Lord said this to me, Lana, Matthew eleven twelve. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent assault and the violent men cease it by force. In the Amplified, it says, as a precious prize. The Passion Translation says it this way. From the moment John the Baptist stepped onto the scene until now, the realm of heaven's kingdom is bursting forth and passionate people have, taught, sorry, have taken hold of its power. Passionate people have taken hold of it by its sorry, taken hold of its power. I believe we are in that time right now where God is inviting us into a place of the ferocious focus of faith. I am not looking anywhere else but what he's saying. I am going to set my face as a flint and I will not move. And the enemy will come at me ferociously and go, rah, and the giants will stand. Well, I will stand in front of those giants and say, who do you think you are, you uncircumcised Philistine, that you would come against the living God, right? There is a fire that is coming within you that is going to raise your faith to such an incredible level. I believe that God is going to impart to many a gift of faith in this new era that is going to change the whole way you do life. There is an awakening by the Spirit of God where he's going to shake things up and go, hey, guess what? That's not what you are meant to live in. I have so much more for you. I gave everything so that you can live in the place of John 10.10 10 and the abundant life and the enemies come to try and steal, kill and destroy from you. But I am coming as the Lion of Judah to roar over your life and to awaken you to who you are and to who I am and in that place where you encounter me me and the roar of my authority, you will not be left the same. You will not be left in a place where you are feeling discouraged and burnt out and weary. There is a fire that will come up within you that will say, I'm not settling for this anymore. I am not going to take this anymore because my God is the one who writes my story. And I want to prophesy over you tonight that the script is changing. I really see tonight that the enemy has tried to lie to you and rewrite your story. This is what it's going to look like. Don't believe that because this is what your portion is. This is what you're destined for. And you know what I see? I see the blood of Jesus pouring over those lies. And I see the hand of God writing your story again and saying, this is what I've said about you. This is who you are. Before you were formed in the womb, this is what I wrote about you. There is revelation coming to you in this new era of what the King of Kings has written in the books of heaven over your life. And there will be moments in dreams, visions and encounters where you will have Holy Ghost divine movie trailers where God will show you what is to come for your life. And suddenly those areas of torment and the areas where the enemy has tried to write your script are suddenly suddenly going to lose their power. Amen. They are going to lose their power and an infusion of faith is going to be released in your heart to run with the Lord in ways that you've never run with him before. The warrior within you is going to come out of you. Amen. 
The battle in this season for many of you hasn't been about where you've been. It's about where you're about to go. It's about what God has for you in this new era, that the enemy is so determined to try and keep you back from what the, what the Lord has for you. Why? Because he's terrified. The enemy is terrified of Jesus in you, the giftings that he's given you, the anointing on your life. He is scared of what God is going to do through you. So he intimidates to try and cause you to pull back. But guess what? You have a loving father in heaven who says, not on my watch. That is my son. That is my daughter. I am not going to allow you to come and to torment anymore. I just believe tonight there is a line being drawn in the sand by the hand of God where he is saying enough is enough amen enough is enough there is a turnaround and a shift that God is releasing tonight thank you God hallelujah okay the Hebrew year that we are in right now is 5780 on the Hebrew calendar and the Hebrew letter for the number 80 is pay p-e-h and pay is also the Hebrew word for mouth. This is the decade of decree. This is the decade of decree where where you will see what you speak manifest. God is bringing us to that place of bold faith, awakening of authority and to the place of saying, hey, watch what you speak. Job 22, 28 says this, you will decide on a matter and it will be established for you and, your, and light will shine on your ways. The Amplified Version says this, you will also decide and decree a thing and it will be established for you and the light of God's favour will shine upon your ways. Now, I am not saying this. Hey, I'm going to walk down the street and I see a great car, so I'm going to decree that I'm going to have that in the name of Jesus. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is decreeing what he sees and what he says. So I believe it's time to see as God sees, to decree what he sees, and then to see what he says. Can I say that again? I believe it's time to see as God sees, to decree what he sees, and then in manifestation to see what he says. Matthew, I'll just tell you this quickly. I had a dream a couple of years ago and the Lord brought it back to me again this afternoon and I won't tell you the whole dream because it's too long. But at the end of the dream, I was talking with a woman who had cancer and she said to me, would you pray for me? And I said, yes. And she said, have you noticed that cancer is on everybody's lips? And I said, yeah, that thing's going to come down in the name of Jesus. And the room began to shake and, the, and the, uh, the ceiling began to crack open. And the greatest tidal wave of healing I've ever seen began to pour into this church. And it represented the body of Christ. And cancer was dropping off like, like flies, right? It was, it was going under the feet of Jesus. It was such a massive healing to see this horrible disease bow to the name of Jesus. But as I woke up, the Lord said to me, Lana, this isn't just a prophetic word of seeing cancer coming down. He said, this is also a word about the words that are on the lips of my people. Don't allow cancer to be on your lips. And I said, Lord, what do you, what do you mean? And he said, don't speak death. Don't speak things that are opposite to life. Really challenged me. You know, in Matthew 12... 36, Jesus says, I'll tell you that everyone will have to give an account, right? On the day of judgment for every, what does it say? Every empty word that they have spoken. The Greek phrase is rema argos, which means careless or inactive or unprofitable words. And the Lord has really been challenging me in this new era regarding idle words and careless words. In Proverbs 18, 20 to 21, it says that a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat of its fruit. Can I encourage you in this new era to pay attention to what you speak? 
the greatest prophet over your life is you. What do you prophesy over your life every day? Oh, it's always going to be this way. I'm sick and tired of this. Even in my own life, God has convicted me. Even a couple of years ago, I was so convicted by the Lord, I opened the fridge and the milk fell out and it spilled everywhere. I turned around to Kevin and I said, that always happens to me. Stuff like that always happens to me. And he just lovingly looked at me with a look that I knew exactly what he was saying. (laughs) And the Holy Spirit said to me, really? What's your expectation, Lana? Where does that come from in the heart? Because out of the heart, the mouth will speak. So I said, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. What's going on inside of my heart that's causing my mouth to speak that? Where is the lie? The Holy Spirit showed me the lie. I repented of the lie and I said, God, what's your truth? And he healed my heart. So I want to encourage you to pay attention to your words in this new era because what you speak is going to be manifested so much in the area of faith. And that's why God's building our faith and bringing us to a place where we will decree. I'm going to end with this and then I want to pray for you. The Lord spoke something so simple yet profound to me last year. And he said to me, Lana, he said, in this new era, he said, simply speaking the name of Jesus he said, we'll bring some of the greatest signs, wonders and miracles that my people have ever seen. It wasn't perfectly formulated prayers. Is there strat- like strategies for prayer? Absolutely. But sometimes in the weariness, the discouragement, and when you've been in a battle for a long time, you can come to a place of, God, I don't know what to pray anymore. I've prayed everything I know how to pray, so maybe I'm praying the wrong prayer. I believe that God is speaking, that there will be times in this new era where you will speak Jesus over your body and you'll be healed. You'll walk into a room and simply say the name of Jesus and the atmosphere will shift. There will be times where you you will look at a, a dead body and you will speak the name of Jesus and it will be raised. And guess what? The glory doesn't go to, how good was my prayer? The glory goes to him. I said the name of Jesus, right? The one who is my healer, my provider, the son of God, the one and only true living God. I spoke his name, the name above all names, the one that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I spoke his name by faith and miracles manifested. I spoke his name by faith. I remembered who he was to me and miracles manifested. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready to see some of the most astonishing moves and miracles and and move of the Spirit of God that you've ever seen in the declaration of the name of Jesus. It is time for the astounding answers to prayer. There will be astounding answers to prayer in this new era as God brings you to a place of greater faith in who He is. I want to say this tonight, that if you're here tonight and you felt really weary and you felt really discouraged because you still haven't seen the promises of God manifest in your life, I want to encourage you with what I just saw. I saw just then in the spirit, a banner being unraveled. And it said, welcome to the reintroduction to my faithfulness. I believe that God is going to reintroduce you in this new era to his faithfulness. Because the enemy would love to say, oh, guess what? God's let you down. That's not true. Do things happen as we expect, when we expect and how we would like them? No, they don't. But when He shows up, it's always glorious. Better than we could ever hope, imagine or dream. That's the God, who, that's who He is. He truly is the God of Ephesians 3.20. Now unto Him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, 
more than you could ever hope, imagine or dream. For eight hours straight one night, that's all he said to me. I am the God of Ephesians 3.20. I am the God of Ephesians 3.20. And that was the word that I needed to know in that moment. I needed to know that he was the God that was on my side, not just to meet my needs and what I was crying out for, but he was the God that was who does more than I could ever imagine. That out of his love for me, that he moves in my life and does infinitely more than I could ever hope, imagine or dream. So I asked the Lord tonight, God, what do you want me to do? Do I pray for people? Prophesy, love to prophesy. What do I do? And the Lord said to me, Lana, I want you to pray for my people that as they enter this new era, that they would walk, (coughs) excuse me, in bold faith that they would walk in bold faith and have encounters with me that change everything. Because this is the moment where everything changes. This is the era where everything changes. This is the era where what has been will no longer be. This is the new beginning. Amen. This is the new beginning. This is the Kairos season. This is the Kairos moment. This is the moment where God is going to lead you into everything that He has promised you. So Lord, we thank You. First and foremost tonight, God, I want to thank You for who You are. Lord, thank You for who You are. God, we just just love You. We love You. We love you, God, for who you are. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you gave everything for us, Lord God, that you laid down your life, Lord God, so that we could be restored to you, to restore to the Father, Lord, that we could walk in eternal life, Lord God, in abundant life. We thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Lord, tonight, I pray for every person in this room. And Lord, I release bold faith over them in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I declare over them tonight that the script is changing, that no longer will you be in a place where fear will try and intimidate you, where the lies of the enemy will try and keep you bound. But this is a moment of deliverance in the name of Jesus, where the Lord is is commissioning you. I see a fresh commissioning tonight to run in all that the Lord has for you. God, I pray that you would burn faith and increase of faith within them tonight, Lord God, that they would hear your voice so clearly, God, that you are roaring over them tonight and you are saying, awake, awake, awake. It's time to run in all that I have for you. Lord, I thank you for the land of occupying. I thank you for the establishing that you're bringing in their life in this new era. Thank you, God, for the fruitfulness. Thank you for the fortification and the enduring faith. Thank you, God, that you love us, God, so much that you are maturing us so that we're here for the long haul, God, that we're running in longevity, Lord God, and that we're not going to miss what you have for us, God, because we are listening to what you're saying. So God, tonight I release your fire in this place, Lord God, to ignite hearts again, Lord God, to run after you and to seek you, God, and to say, not on my watch. If God says it, I'm not moving from it. So I thank you, Lord, for a fresh impartation of hope tonight, a fresh impartation of faith. I thank you, Lord, that this is the time to run. This is the time to run in all that you have for them, Lord God. So I bless bless them tonight, Lord God, I bless them. And I speak right now an impartation for eyes to see, that you will see in the Spirit as God sees, that you will dream dreams like you've never dreamt before, that you will encounter Jesus in ways that are just unprecedented. Lord, we just say yes to you again tonight, Lord God. We say yes to you and to your plans, Lord God. And we say we will go, we will do whatever it is that you want us to do, Lord God to bring glory to your name. We bless you, Lord, and we thank you, God, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you. I hear that scripture in Song of Songs. 
In the Passion Translation, it says, Can you hear the cooing of doves in the land? The cooing of doves, they coo in the time of harvest. So, Lord, I thank you for the harvest. I thank you, God, for the harvest that is coming in. And I thank you that it's harvest time. And I prophesy harvest time over your people tonight in the name of Jesus. It's harvest time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.